So shout it out loud, Cass. We're up to episode 30, Tom. 30. Wow. Uh, what are we calling this one? Well, we're calling this one the hottest brand in the land. And yeah, why, why we do- is that? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. I was just going to say, and why, why are we doing that? Because... Nicholas Buckland, the man behind one of the most talked about and exciting kiss books to come out in a long time. The hottest brand in the land. Nicholas, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm glad you got my check for titling your uh, podcast out of my, <laughs> off, off my book. Yeah, it was fantastic. I'm glad it cleared in time. I made sure of it. I talked to my bank. They talked to your authors. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Yeah. A hundred percent of zero is what? <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. exactly. I'm doubling your salary. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 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 We'll yeah. take it. Yes. So, <laughs> gentlemen, anything going on in Kiss World? Um. Well, they're, they're on that break until they come back to the U.S. Um. Nicholas, any Kiss news that you may have? We're not going to get into the book just yet, but anything Kiss World related on your end that you can think of? Uh, not too much. There's, I mean, there's obviously the, the merchandise is sort of trickling along at the moment. I, 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 you probably saw the new light up Kiss Crocs that have come out. Um, they've oh. got LED lights in it. So <laughs> in, case, in case you didn't want to draw more attention to yourself wearing Crocs, you can now actually have them light up and, and, and fixate people's views straight to your feet wearing them. I, yeah. I, I actually I actually saw those online. One of one of a, one of our Twitter followers uh, posted a little video of him uh, turning them on. And look, I, I love Kiss. But Kiss Crocs are bad enough. Light up Kiss Crocs? Wow. Yeah, and then the piece to resistance is if you wear um, Kiss socks with Kiss Crocs. <laughs> and th- that combination is like, it's, it's guaranteed to dry up a vagina from a million million miles away. Yeah, no woman will ever sleep with you again. <laughs> and make sure you have your uh, Kiss cargo pants um, yeah. or... Uh, Maybe 80s style parachute pants with them. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you'll exactly. definitely get the ladies going with that. Yeah. You're oh, a that's a look. <laughs> um, what was that other thing that you saw, um, Tomas, that so, you were yeah. telling me about? So, all right. So it's not really kiss news, but it just it came across um, the other day. It was actually yesterday. It was in uh, Ultimate Classic Rock, which everybody is familiar with, especially for Kiss stuff. And it was a story that related to Kiss that I just thought was hilarious. Um, it, there's, an, there's a new book coming out called um, No Encore, and it's a, a book written by uh, Drew Fortune. Um, and it features um, all different stories, um, you know, Alice Cooper, Dee Snyder, Lita Ford, Sammy Hagar. And the story about Sammy Hagar I thought was just hilarious. It relates to him – Way back in, I think it was 77, he opened up for uh, Sammy Hagar. So he said, I'll kind of just read a little bit. He said, they sold out Madison Square Garden. They asked me at the last minute to be the opening act for their 10-show East Coast run. Nobody knew who I was or even that I was on the bill. I didn't have any fans. The audience started booing as soon as Sammy Hagar's name had been announced. By the time he got to his third song, uh, he stopped singing. He started yelling to the crowd, you fucking assholes. You didn't even give me a chance. You started booing me before you heard the music. Fuck you. He says then he attempted. He, he started yelling at the crowd. Um, then this is where the story gets great. He said, he said fans started hurling cups at him. Then Hagar says, quote, I pulled down my pants, dropped my drawers and pulled out my dick and shook it at the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, then I smashed my Stratocaster to pieces and I walked off stage. He Ooh. says, he says, then I passed Paul Stanley and, John, and Gene Simmons on my way out. He said, he said, I unloaded on them too. He said, fuck you guys. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> he goes, I'm not doing any more shows with you. And then Paul Stanley goes, Sammy, you can't talk to people like that. You got to go out and prove yourself. You can't do this. And Sammy goes, fuck you and your makeup. <laughs> That's, That's powerful. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I, again, just a hilarious story. Um, you know, I just when as soon as I, I, I'm picturing Sammy, everybody loves Sammy. Now, I can't picture me like, fuck you and your makeup. <laughs> 
Well, it, it, it makes me think of like um, he was kind of like it was just normal plastic bottles because um, the story goes of 50 Cent playing at Glastonbury and he wasn't too popular. And he starts standing there and all these bottles start, plastic bottles start hitting him and he's being showered with water. And it takes him a couple of seconds, maybe the smell of it, to realise that that's not water. People have stood there in the crowd, pissed in them, and he was now being showered in. <laughs> he took about four steps back and kept kept rapping. It was like you know, there's almost a look on his face of that ain't water. <laughs> oh God! So cut, so cut, cut, not not big fans of Kanye over there. No, I don't think. Or, or yeah, exactly. But no, I just I, I just think it's like welcome welcome to London, basically. Yeah, welcome exactly. To, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Couldn't now, happen to a nicer guy. Now, real quick, now now where are you right now, Nicholas? I'm in LA at the moment. Okay, and obviously your 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 main your home is Australia. So, yeah, okay. Australia? Yeah, that's where okay. I'm from. What okay. part of Australia? Well, I'm from Sydney. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which okay. is odd, which is odd actually. I, I just saw that they've announced their third concert in Melbourne, but um, my Sydney show I've now got moved close to the stage, which means it, it mustn't be selling as well. So it's really well, yeah. weird. But Sydney's the biggest city, but um, Melbourne just seems to be the kiss town all the time. Yeah, and it's funny that you 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 mentioned that because uh, uh, I don't know if it was last week or a couple episodes ago. Um, episodes ago, Zeus and I brought up that there are reports that some of the second leg of the tour are, are kind of not selling. That right now, you know, some of these venues are you know half or you know a third full right now, and you know yeah. people are starting. To, Kiss fans are starting to get worried about what's uh, what's going to happen. Is is Kiss fatigue settling in? But I don't know. Some of these, the second leg, the new, their venues that they haven't played before. So I hope that's not it. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, Zeus, you want to uh, take it from there and do what, what do you call this? Our Murph questions for our guests. So this is named after uh, Tommy's little footy pajama roommate from college, Murph. <laughs> so favorite Kiss member? Favorite Kiss member? I'm I'm a big fan of Ace Frehley. You know, okay. I'm also I'm also a bit of a partier, especially in my youth. So I kind I kind of I've got we're a bit kindred kindred spirits in that way, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, good one. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Favorite Kiss song? Um, I'm a big sucker for "Lover All I Can." It's just that's just oh, classic excellent. classic Kiss classic Kiss bottled up right there. You know, it just it's off the bat. It's just bang straight into that and that that kind of looping riff that goes in it. You know. Um, you know, the drums, guitar solo was just almost just like on a fire explosion straight out of the docks. It's it's them kind of going, like if you follow, even though they didn't play it that much, but if you followed a band playing that, you'd just be going, oh, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, I don't want to follow that band, basically. And and that that really bottles what I love most about Kiss. Absolutely. One of, one of Ace's most underrated guitar solos. Terrific song. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Drums, everything. The, yep, the everything, voice. Yeah. I think it's just a t- awesome, awesome yep. song. Mm-hmm. Favorite my, 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 yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, my, the one that really got me into Kiss in terms of, um, like, if also a second favorite song is um, Love Them and Leave Them. And, and I just I, I just love how Peter just decides to, from about the start of the bridge going into the chorus, it's now just a drum solo. Like, a, you know, he says, oh, like, yeah. oh, stiff, says doom, boom, boom. <laughs> and it's, it's just crazy, but it, it just works perfectly. So that, that one almost hits in as first, but that's just a slight second. Nice. And, and the yeah. video just makes it better. Yeah. The oh. way G kind of throws that bass up. And, yes. You know, that's yeah. Tommy does a great like, impression know. of that. Yeah, the, exactly. That's, yes, that's the best. <laughs> or this is when he starts yeah. out and he just comes down, he kicks his leg up yeah. in the air and he starts looking around. Yeah. Oh, it's, on, it's awesome. Like yeah. Yes. Awesome. It just makes those songs that you remember when you're younger, you're like, and you, when you first started seeing those videos, you're like, holy shit. And you yep, just yeah. get a, a better appreciation for them. Yeah, exactly. Favorite Kiss album? Rock and Roll Over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love like that. Start yep. to finish. So again, that's Kiss right there. And yep. then so, because of what we mentioned before, Second Coming is Dressed to Kill. So okay. Second for me. Yeah. So you can't you kind of get where I'm coming from in terms oh, of yeah. the sound. It's just yep. that classic kiss sound. That that's I, I love all I love all the eras, but there's something about that which just it adds that extra chill in my spine whenever I hear it. And I probably probably do air, more air drums and more guitar to it. Of course, <laughs> the others I probably just tap along here. Yeah. Yep. Well, Absolutely. those are pick. Those both are awesome albums. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how many Kiss concerts have you been to? Not as many as you think, because I, I don't do multiple concerts. I would, I just do one of every tour. So it would. My first one was '95 because I was I was only five years old in 1980. So although I 
kind of appreciated what was going on in Australia. I was, there's no way mum would have ever. She didn't even let me go. <laughs> Still annoys me to this day. All my friends went and saw ACDC blow up your video tour in when I was 13 and mum wouldn't let me go and see them. And they barely liked ACDC and ACDC were like the love of my life and I missed out. And a friend kind of bought me a T-shirt, and that kind of made it worse. But we got to see him. Here's the T-shirt. Um, but yeah, sorry, I just I, I, I need some therapy for that one. Still. That's okay. Uh, but no, no, so yeah, 1995 was was by the time I actually saw Kiss. So that was on the I suppose like an extended revenge leg. But rather than um, rather than have the Statue of Liberty stand there and give the the finger to all Australians, they wisely decided to bring Leon back and. Yeah, so we got the Sphinx from um, from Hot in the oh, Shade really? out, out in that tour, yeah. Really? So, okay, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah cuz my, my first show was uh, the Hot in the Shade tour with Leon, so I didn't know I didn't know that they brought that. Yeah, they uh, brought it cuz you couldn't cuz you couldn't tour out of out of America with, you know, because it, it would it'd be weird <laughs> to understand like why is, why, exactly. Why, why, why is America giving us the thing? What about right. this? <laughs> no, that's that's a good point. No, is this, yeah, is this the thing. Crocodile Dundee too? I mean, we've apologized <laughs> enough, you know. Yep, yep. <laughs> So, would you say two, one, two, three? How many? How many concerts? Uh, okay, so it would be every um, every tour since. So I'd probably say five. Five. Well, for many time, yeah, like reunion tour. Then I think I missed Psycho Circus or Farewell Tour. I missed somewhere in there. I kind of, kind of waned a bit, and then yeah, then then all the ones after that. I saw gotcha. the Kiss in Your Face one, the the smaller show at the Enmore Theatre. That was quite cool. That was with Tommy and Eric. Yeah. First time. It was good seeing them in a little venue, actually. It nice. was quite good. Yeah, and they were quite energized at that point. So, yeah. Cool. Favorite kiss memory? Um, it, I suppose this is what leads me to, to, you know, running everything kiss and that. It's like I have memories of things which are even further from the band. It's, you know, I, like I remember the ice blocks in the shops. I go up to the local shops and they didn't taste very nice. I always preferred Empire Strikes Back. But um, I remember I remember the Kiss ones in there, and I sort of remember the bubble gum card people trading them at school. Yep. So it was it was more the way Kiss were part of. I, I remember my cousins, at least three cousins, they had Kiss parties like that's in, you know now you might have a frozen party for your daughter or something like that. But back then you kind of there'd be no other band where you would say okay it's Tommy's Kiss eighth party. birthday and it's a Kiss party and everyone dresses up as Kiss the best their parents could. Cobbled that's awesome. together out of black material like that that's how much it permeated into yeah. our culture so all my memories are of that and because i was a bit younger and probably not staying up to watch countdown or the music shows it's less of the music like i don't remember listening to the music as much as i did just seeing kiss everywhere yep i was more Absolutely. aware more aware of, of of their infiltration than i was the music yep. yeah okay imagine that a kiss party Hey, look, little Billy's impression ace. He's throwing up in the corner. Exactly. (laughs) Little Steve is trying to breathe fire. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Why is is little Peter Peter dropping his pants? It's like (laughs) a little spoiler. (laughs) Somebody's trying to bang the fat babysitter. (laughs) Oh, oh, man. Oh, kiss Just birthday parties, Tom. And we need to have one. The next yeah, birthday we'll party is a kiss theme birthday party. Well, yeah, we can. Oh, Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, all right. So, well, you answered that, buddy. So, we're going to go to our main subject. And obviously, that is your book. Yeah. So, tell us all about the hottest brand in the land. If I can jump in real quick and interrupt, I'm sorry to interrupt the question. Before we get into the book, can you tell us a little bit about everythingkiss.com? That is pretty much you, correct? Yeah, that is me, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, yep, start, started that one probably about 11 or 12 years ago now. It was just it was just getting those little books like Tom Shannon's uh, Little Guide and a few other little books. And I, I was always frustrated that when once they're printed, they're sort of out of date. And I was always I was looking online for you know, trying to find information and it just wasn't there. And I, you know, like, like I always do, if I, if, if something doesn't exist, I always think, well, why don't I just create it myself? So, you know, got in contact, you know, usually by email back in the day with a few people. I'm sort of asking what's out there. I'm, you know, basically going on eBay and, you know, really learning what's been, so it's, it's really been taken time. So I've now reviewed over, we're probably close to some rebuilding the new one now, probably close to 7,000 products, licensed products wow. are, are, on, are on the site now. Um, you know, like from from the beginning right to I, I like it just to cover everything. So it's yeah, 
yeah, it's basically everything that comes out. And when, when, when new things come out, the new 29 merchandise goes on there. Um, yeah. So that's, that, that's awesome. basically behind it. And then I've built up a big sort of social media presence. We have a lot of fun. I don't take anything seriously. So, yeah, that's that sort of weeded out a lot of people who can't take sort of humorous jokes and, and memes oh, I, I, along, I, I, along with how – I flippantly treat the product, so that I kind of. Oh I, yeah. yeah like, like, like like I talked about with Kiss Crocs and that. Like I, I I love Kiss, but I don't take it all seriously. There's a lot of tongue in cheek, a lot of campness and stuff like that. Oh, so that's, 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 that's the feel of our social media. It's being silly and laughing at yourself. Oh, and that's the feel, and that's the feel of our show too. I mean, if there's anybody out there that is taking light up Kiss Crocs seriously. <laughs> then yeah. they, they, they need some help. If anybody's offended by us making fun of light up kiss crocs, then this is the wrong show for them. See, I had, I had a friend put it perfectly. I thought he summed it up perfectly and it put it all into perspective. You remember when they released in 2013, the hello kitty range, kiss hello oh. kitty. Oh yeah. And everyone was up in arms saying kiss hello kitty. This is the most ridiculous thing. And this guy at my work who wasn't a kiss fan, he goes, but doesn't one of the members of the band dress up like a kitty? <laughs> and I said, okay, <laughs> You're right. It's just like, Ex- also, a cat kiss is strange, except for the cat man kiss. Exactly. Like, you know, you're kind of going, it isn't that ridiculous. It makes perfect sense. You know? Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And 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 the other the other question before we get into the book, I have become a huge fan of the Kiss My Collectibles podcast, oh, which cool. which you are you're you're on you're not on every episode. No, but- no. Um, they only pay me. Um- <laughs> So, part yeah, part time. Of, yeah, part time. They kind of pull me all the time. Yeah. No, so um, so yeah. I'm I'm, lo- I'm loving that show, and I have to blame you, your co-host mm. Andrew, and the other guys for. Ever since I started listening, my wife is like, "What is being delivered today?" Because I'm now I'm on e- <laughs> n- 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 I am on I am now on eBay because I have I have uh, uh, in my basement I have what, what I call my kiss bar. All right. I have all my collectibles, my bar stools, my all, you know, everything. It's not as big as other people's collect, um, you know, kiss rooms. But I started listening to your show. and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like I'm going to go check that out. And then I'll go on eBay and it'll be there and I'll buy it. My wife's like, what is this now? I'm like, I told my wife, I said, tonight we're interviewing Nicholas, the creator of that book. He's also the reason why everything keeps getting delivered to our house. So if my wife jumps in and yells at you, you'll know why. <laughs> exactly. Well, she can. So you can have a long conversation with my wife, and yeah, yeah. They can be, yeah. <laughs> but at least what I've done now is I've set up um, the single bed with the 1978 sheet. So if we have a big fight about it, and I'm sent to the doghouse, at least I get to oh, cool. I'm like I'm sleeping, sleeping by myself tonight in a kiss bed <laughs> with with my Gene Simmons teddy bear. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So now, now we can get into the book. Why don't you tell us from the beginning? Um, you know, start from the beginning with, with this book and what, what it's all about. Well, um, okay, I'll, I'll sort of a brief description of it is this is not really a book. It is for collectors, but it is also not for collectors. And the way I say that is the perspective of the book is not about this is worth this much and on this market you can get this and, you know, this is valuable. I'm treating it like this is a big, warm hug of nostalgia. This is meant to make you feel like you're a kid again and your mum's taking you to the shops and it was almost like, you open this book and you feel like you've walked up to the to the shelves and, and seen that on the shelves. So this is all about I'm treating it as though this is the information from the time. This is this is 1978. This came out here. There's how much it cost. It was three dollars thirty three. Can you believe that? You know all that kind of sort of. And I have all the little ads that came out and all the little the little promo things that came with it. Just but I wanted it to be contained within that and not not a collector's price guide. There's no prices. There's no mention of what the collector's market does. This is just about the love. I've, I wanted it done beautifully. I've been a graphic designer, creative director for, you know, 25 years. I also brought on board Joe, who's the other host on Kiss My Collectibles, who is yep. an amazing graphic designer. So when I kind of burnt out of staring at this thing for two and a half years, I said, I really need some help to take to that next level. So this is really a beautiful, heavy, lives on your coffee table kind of book. The paper is stunning. It's weighty. It's, you know, it's, there's a reason why few people complain about the price. It's It's a big book. It's like... You, can't, you guys at home can't see it, but it's like oh. a huge kind of thing with so many pages in there, and it, it weighs a ton basically. So look at that. It's it, you know, it's it's a thing of beauty, and I, I'm not just saying that to sell it. I'm saying I, I I got it when I first saw it, and I was going, wow, I love this too. You know, like, and well, I've been I, bloody working on it for three years. You know. <laughs> well, I I remember I remember when I first because I follow everything Kiss on Twitter and mm-hmm. Facebook, and I, I remember a while back when I first 
when things first started trickling in that the book was in production and that it was coming out. And like you said, this book hits a sweet spot for me because I was five years old in 78. So right at the peak of kiss and the merchandising. So just, just seeing some pictures online, like you said, the nostalgia, you know, seeing those Halloween costumes, you know, you know, just, you know, the, the, the the kiss radio the you know, it's just, it's amazing. I suppose it's the same kind of thing that even if you don't collect Star Wars, if someone shows you a whole bunch of cool Star Wars stuff from 1977, 78, of course you look at it. It's awesome, a little hard, a little chewy, you know. Yeah. I don't collect it personally, but that's so cool. It's that feeling of, oh, yeah, because that's me as a kid, you know, or I have memories of it, you know, as a kid, or older brothers had it, you know, that kind of feeling. Yep. So that's kind of what I'm trying to portray here, which is also why I didn't include press kits or in-store promo. This had to be stuff that kids could get. You had to either be able to buy it from a shop or you get it from mail order. This is this is this is your childhood. If your parents were super rich, you could have had everything in this book. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you would have been super duper rich. But yeah, you know, you'd be you know what I mean? So it's I would cover that other stuff somewhere else or maybe it doesn't get made into a book. Yeah, but that, that's what I'm talking about. This is like this is us growing up children's dream, you know, and that's why I kind of the the main eras are nineteen seventy seven, seventy eight, seventy nine, eighty. And I cover the other eras, 73 to 76 at the start, and 81 to 83 to bookend the two. But it really is those four years of just magic for kids. They were everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the nostalgia yeah. is what gets me. So I'm not a collector. Yeah. Um, mm. But I see the book, and that's what I want. If The fact that you're what you're telling me sells me even more. I mm. want to open up the book and be like, oh, my God. I remember opening up what those cards look like. I, I mean, mm. on our first episode, me and Tommy talked about this. It's like I remember the smell of opening up mm. those cards. Yeah, like yeah. that, you can't put a price on it. So I yep. want to see those things that I saw in the store. Like you'd be like pulling on your mom, like like their jacket. Come on, I want to get this. I want to get this. And it's not about you know, oh, Ace's solo on uh, yeah, exactly, cover all exactly. I can. It's about. The other part of KISS. Yeah. And that's why we do a KISS podcast. And there are KISS podcasts about collectibles. And yeah. it works. You can't do this on anything else because KISS exactly. has that other side. And and it's we talk about this all the time. Wrestling fans, Star mm. Wars fans, and KISS fans. Yeah, they <laughs> love them. Too. And they just love to bitch about shit. <laughs> but yeah, they exactly. but they but they're fanatics. And yeah. And it works. So a book like yours, I it's in my wheelhouse because I'm not a collectible, uh, a collector. Yeah. But it's it's I'm dying to get it. This is this is your childhood packaged up. That's what I wanted it to be. And also, yeah, you know, I made sure. You know, I've also you know been a creative director, so you know I, I've been styling photo shoots for years. So I had you know beautiful light tent, and you know it's all shot beautifully. Like this is almost like you know these are high end. They're not really high end items because they sell for a dollar. But you know, what I mean, I treated them as though they're beautiful works of art. And it was. It's funny enough, the Star Wars thing is mentioned because one of the things that did influence me was a book by a guy called Steve Sansweet. I don't know if you've heard of him. He runs this thing called Rancho Obi Wan. And he gives um he gives all to, to charity and he has this massive he's super duper rich so he's got this massive warehouse that's got you know I think it's got close to something to forty thousand Star Wars items in it wow and you can tour, you can tour this around have a look online it's absolutely amazing I bet he, he gets laid a, a lot huh yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah exactly I don't know about that hey um, come check this out ladies <laughs> yeah exactly form an orderly queue exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, so but, but he brought out a book called A Thousand and One Collectibles from a Galaxy Far Away. Again, I don't collect Star Wars at all, but I saw this book and I went, wow, imagine there'd be a Kiss version of this. So that's kind of where it gestated from, just seeing the way the way this guy li- laid out, you know, dorky little Lando Calrissian toys, yep. <laughs> but made them look beautiful. It was a little inspiration to me. So I think, I think a, t- a tip of my 1920s cap that no one can see. Um, to 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 from that Ellis Island, yeah, from yeah. Ellis Island, yes, exactly, yeah. So now, so when did you when when did you so you got the idea from you know like you said it kind of began with that. So when did you yeah. when did you start like really getting into it? So right right now for the listeners out there that might not be fully aware of this book, the book mm-hmm. is getting ready. You know, pre orders are going on. The book is getting ready yep. to ship. Yeah. So, so the, um, sorry, you yep, go ahead. 
No, I was just going to say, yes, so the, the, even the autograph ones, which I'm getting done in three days' time, they'll actually start shipping on probably Sunday, actually. And then okay. the, re- the standard editions will go out in about a month. They've got to arrive by boat by China. So, um, yeah, they take a little bit longer than the promotions you get. So. Okay. Yep. So how long did it take for you to get to where you are? Has it been, how, how you know, a year, I'd two say, years? I, like- no, 2017 is when I started. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and funnily enough, I, I had had... Um, earlier discussions with a guy called Ross Radley when he was starting his initial things with his magic book that's that's still in progress um and we talked about me doing the graphic design on it and he I was talking about a big beautiful coffee table and he wanted to go a different direction you know a lot of pictures on the page so we kind of parted way there and that really got me thinking why don't I just do my own book why don't I be the author why don't I create the thing I want to create and let him do his magic on his book you know rather than me sort of do a bit of project work for someone else i thought oh, once again here i am like with everything kiss i gotta make it myself you know yep well it, it's funny because i am familiar with ross and i am familiar with his book yep. um and you know if, if i can i had this on my list of questions so since you brought it up um mm-hmm. i don't want to get into it too much you know out of respect for his project but can you maybe just talk a little bit about the ross seems to be having some difficulties and delays getting his project done what do you what did you do that was a little bit different than what he did that allowed you to finish your project and get it you know get it ready to be shipped what what do you think were some of the things that you did a little differently maybe yeah look i mean both myself and joe have done you know like i was a magazine art director for so long so i like a publishing and all that kind of stuff is pretty much second nature you know, i still work for mojo magazine in london Okay. I've done a lot of music magazines and stuff, so I kind of knew the way it's got to work. You know, I've always been driving. I've worked off flat plans. It may not make sense to people, but you know, where where the actual magazine is all planned out. Yeah. So I you know, could plan out my what I needed the content to be. I could, you know, start to have blank pages. We go, okay, this has got to come in here, and it becomes like I suppose like when you're finishing a film, there's you know, they complete little scenes, and there's other scenes which are just drawings for the moment. So I would start yep. to you know plan it all out and organize because I, you know, shot that 60% from my own collection, but then I had to, you know, coordinate people from overseas. I had people, you know, Norway, Japan, Mexico, Canada, everyone's in Britain. They've all shot stuff for me and, you know, art directing them from afar. Like, they, you know, a bit more light on that, um, you, you know, you take the camera lens off, you know. <laughs> just, you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 there are some very sweet people who, who need, a, you know, a lot of help with um, taking, you know, there's people who did some of mates. Some people even pay to have professional photographers take the stuff of their their collections because they wanted to help out. So much. Someone like Mark Cicchini who admitted he's terrible at taking photos, he got his daughter um, to take the photos for him and I ended up with some great photos and I was sort of going like this, you know, on a white background, like, okay, can you turn your ceiling lights off because you're getting reflections in it? So it was, it was yep. a lot of back and forth with people to get like a premium quality stuff from people who are just not naturally photographers. But okay. yeah, I think I think I'm, I think I've always been a great project manager. Like I and 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 who knows? I mean, I, I can't speak to why Ross just hasn't come out. I mean, the big difference, to be fair to Ross, if I was going to say something, that he has to negotiate um, rights with photographers. Okay. I only had to I only had to collate stuff that either I had or other fans had. So there was no there was no, no rights. There, there was no financial transaction or rights between it. So Ross has got a lot of a different story to deal with. Got it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Those fucking lawyers. But yeah. um, but Ross R- Ross did help out with his book in some of the um photo captions. So you know, like yep. there'd be things that were you might have the trash can, and and I've mentioned well that was from a shot shot on this day and Ross was just so nice he would you know in while doing his book he would send me um you know actually just a shot at this studio and that so I could include those little bits and pieces and I sent him a few little pieces for his book so yeah I can't I can't speak a bad word about him I I cannot also speak for why it's held up I really don't know yep okay no I think I I I I appreciate you answering that thank you Mm. cool so along the way you start this book you come up with the you know, you've got these this grand idea. Um, you've got the vision. You're starting to get the photos in. I'm assuming at some point, and I've heard this, but I'm not sure all the listeners have heard this, and I want you to tell the story. Um, at some point, you put it out there, and, you know, you're going to get Paul and Gene's attorney knocking on your door yeah. going, wait a minute, and you got to 
you know, I, I, again, I, I say this, I'm not sure if you know, I'm an attorney. So I know yeah. I always think with that attorney hat on, how am I going to get sued and where are they going to come at me from? Yeah. So I can imagine, but it seems like you did your homework and you might want to just explain to everybody how you got started and then how you, this yeah. book got Paul and Jean and their counsel involved in how you're able to get that connection yeah. together. Look, I think I, I think we went off the early on, you know, with a few people I was talking to um, about legal rights to be able to. So if I'm doing a book on Coca-Cola, I can't red, run a red cover with the Coca-Cola logo. I'm breaching their trademark. I can, however, do a book on vintage Coca-Cola bottles. I can shoot that bottle on the cover, and I'm pretty sure that I'm legally allowed to shoot my bottle. It does feature their logo on it, but it, it's a... Like I could shoot a street sign and if Coca-Cola's logo was on a billboard, I wouldn't be in as much breach of, of you know, the, legal, the legalities as I would be as if I actually just ran it and saying this was a, an official Coca-Cola book, Coca-Cola endorsed it. So yeah. I suppose it's, it's the right to be able to photograph your own stuff that you paid for, even if it contains a logo. I would never be able to use the KISS logo without, yeah. without the permission, but a KISS logo could appear... Like I could run a photo of a person wearing a KISS badge in 1976. Kind of be in breach of, of trademark, but kind of not, because it's a photograph mm-hmm. that I took of an event. Um, so I start, I started to work on that. Whether or not that was correct or not, you'll have to tell me. But um, <laughs> it, it didn't really matter in the end because they kind of they contacted me after I posted the original cover, which is the same as the, the final one, just missing the logo. I'd, we'd gotten quite far, and it was always going to be an unofficial book, and they just kind of said... You know, they, they did say that I could be in breach of the trademark, but they also said that we would actually like to sort of make this an official book. So um, Gene's obviously seen it. He follows us on Twitter. So he's obviously seen it that way or someone sent it to him and said, hey, have a look at this. But there was never any threatening thing. But it, it was, you know, you know, there was still mention as they're legally allowed to do. You know, if you do go down this route without us, you know, we, we could have a look at this. So, um, but that, that, I mean, the... The guys at their legal, um, their legal firm, are, they're such nice people. A guy called Gregory Grazia at Miller Canfield, a lovely guy, and everyone I've worked with at Kiss have been like super lovely, and they've been and they've been they've really tried to work things out, you know, along the way. They've been going, you know, you could be in breach of this, but what we'd rather do is, you know, go into partnership with you, not, you know, in terms of do a book, you know, this is what we'd rather do, you know, and you know we worked out the terms and it suited me and it suited them, and you know here we are. It's been ever everyone's been very friendly at the Kiss organization. And then how did and then and then how did you so with that little collaboration then how did you then get to the point where now you're able to you're in LA as as you said a little while ago. How did you get to the point where now you're able to have them autograph them and sell those as like a like a super deluxe edition? You know, how did, how did you get to that point? Well we you know, obviously we're not trying not to be fanboys or we're we're running a business here, so we thought well Okay, if you if you want to, you know, for for this arrangement and this financial situation and whatever we agree in a contract, we thought, well, if you don't ask, you don't get. We go, well, could yep. Gene and Paul autograph some of the copies? And they, you know, said, sure, we will we'll autograph some of the copies. And we went, okay, cool. They, you know, it was as simple as just an idea that Joe and myself, yeah. had, you know, wouldn't it wouldn't it be cool if they could sign some of them? Like not all of them, just a small amount. And we we always wanted. The, the, the whole thing with, um, you know, you remember your old Kiss albums and they were chockers full of, you know, the, the merchandise form and the love gun and all that and a poster and stuff. So we said, well, we can't put out a book without giving people bonus stuff. So there was the standard edition, which is just the book, the deluxe edition with the, the lovely foil cover, which I absolutely in love with. But with the foil cover, you get a postcard, you get a sticker and you get a poster with it. So I wanted to give that vintage Kiss feeling. And oh, then yeah. with the, the ultra signed deluxe, they sign it and you also get all four postcards, whereas... The deluxe just gets a random postcard. You could get a Peter, could get an Ace, could get a Gene. You may have to buy all four to try and get them all. But you know, <laughs> it's still it's, you could end up with. You could also end up for ninety nine dollars each. You know, um, getting <laughs> getting four genes. So, but they're, they're all sold out now anyway. So the both the 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 ultra signed deluxe sold out within an hour, and the um wow. the deluxe edition two hundred and fifty copies of deluxe edition sold out within ten days. So that was pretty exciting and pretty amazing. That's awesome. So now, okay, do you plan on the standard edition will just continuously sell throughout? Yeah. So we've, we've got the license for a good number of years, so it'll continue. And then you can renegotiate at the end anyway, so it'll, it'll just continue selling, basically. So, um, 
Yeah. Oh. That, okay. and, so and right and right now, I don't yeah. even I don't even think we I don't even think we mentioned this, but people can get the book at hottest brand in the hottest brand book.com. Hottest brand book.com. Yeah. It's, okay. I didn't go with the whole name. Yeah. Hottest brand book.com uh, is where you can pick it up. But there's only the standard edition left now because all the deluxe are sold out. Now, do you have any plans in the future at all about having this book be available anywhere other than that website? Look, at the, at the moment, I've just been so busy with all the promotion that all I've been thinking about is the website. It, it may down the track, we may go down the route of, of other booksellers, bookstores, yep. you know, possibly even way down the track an electronic version. But I always say with, with the ebook version, you know, I, I never like to do something unless it's special. So if I do an ebook version, I might do something special and add extra things in, you know, as an extra incentive, you know, to, to buy the thing, you know. I, I love giving people bonuses or special gifts. Or something. Oh yeah, we'll do something special with it anyway. If we if we end up doing an e version, it'll be special. It won't just be blunt. Here's the PDF, the same as the book. Right now, how big now how how big is the finished product? How 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 many pages are we looking at? How many pages? It's memory three hundred and what are we at? I think it's three ninety two. Yeah, wow. three ninety two pages. Ooh. Yeah, and it's um it's nine inches by nine inches. That's like a Peter Spoiler by Peter Spoiler. Um, so it's with. And yeah, and it's it's heavy. It's about six pounds. So it's, wow, yeah, it's almost history, but not quite history. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah that was but, Zeus. Go ahead. Did you have something, Zeus? I was, no, yeah. I mean, I, there are obviously stuff that I, I was going to ask with, you know, what's in the book. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously there are um, it's listing all those items that from our childhood and yep. n- uh, nostalgia yeah, and stuff. Thing. Now, is there description or is it just pictures? Yep. Yep, description of every single product gets a description, and I and I talk about you know variants. I show parts of like the TV commercials that ran with them, and you know little talks about you know what came with it, you know, and just just little tidbits. I, I also got access to the Acoin uh, Bootwell um, archives of the, all all their correspondence. So I, oh, where, where 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 possible, I was able to you know talk about what was asked. Some things like the, the first version of the radio, they actually had to pay. Um, his twenty thousand dollars because the original ones were defective and it wasn't to the his standard. So they actually, the first they had to pay the money, then they had to start paying the royalties on that radio. So that's why there's a little tweak to the design. There's like a white version, and some of the writings will be different on the earlier versions. But yeah, so I've got I've got hold of all that correspondence. So I was able to include that kind of information in there. So you're getting it straight from Ron um, Ron Bertwell's and Bill Coins actual typed up notes from their meetings. Right. Wow! Wow! Mm. Nice, nice. Now, yeah. in the book, mm. is there? Um, do you have a specific favorite item of yours that you see in there? And you're like, that's my favorite. Hmm. It, what, one of the things that I can't wait for people to see. I, I took this over to John Five, the Marilyn Manson guitarist house, the other day. Checked out his phenomenal collection, um, and showed him the book. And I, I, I knew there was one piece in there which he'd go, man, I've never seen that. You know, like, that, that really excited me because he's, he's got almost everything. And there's something like that in there. I reckon every Kiss fan will go, I've never seen that before. And I tracked down, in Australia, they did the Kiss masks, those, those little plastic Kiss masks. Yep. The okay. dip, little, little bit different to the American ones. These had, Peter had, they obviously went off the first album cover, so Peter's got the full whiskered uh. kind of thing. But, but okay. I, I managed to track down a collector who actually had the in-store box for that. It's got the unmasked picture on it, and it, has, wow. it says Kiss Mask. I had never seen that in my life. And John Five went, I've never seen that. And John had just one of the top Uber collectors from Canada. He went, I've never seen that. And was, I was yep. going, now now that makes me smile. because it's like, Oh, yeah. Which means for, for everyone who's in there, even the hardcore collectors will have a little thing in there and go, where did you get that from? And, oh, God, now I've got to collect that, you know, that moment of, Great. Now there's another thing on my list. Now, See, that's now, awesome. That's now, when awesome. You, now, when you were putting the book together, how did you know, like, where to, where to stop or where to go? Like, how did you, like, did you have, like, did you have, like, a running list that you wanted to reference? Or, like, how did you know wh- when to continue or when to say, okay, I'm, I've had, I, this is, the book has enough in it. You know what I mean? Like, wh- wh- how did you reach that point? Well, it had a few stuff. Obviously, I knew the list of the stuff because I'd been running everything here, so I just knew to okay. Okay. from that time. I could go to every page and go, okay, I'll just grab 73 to 83, write down that list and start filling it out. But along the way, there's so much more things. 
presented themselves. They kept moving it back and back and back, and which is kind of why I didn't. I that was very different to the magic book. I never gave anyone a date. Anytime they said, "When's this coming out?" I said, "Soon, 2018, yep. 2019." As we moved to 2019, it'll come out because I want it to be the best it can be. So I was never giving them a firm date, and I, that's why I, I didn't give anyone a pre-order. There was no pre-order available. You could not pre-order this thing. It was. It'll come out when it's done because I, I keep getting handed new information. Someone goes, have you seen this? There's a different version of the gene key ring. There's the one that's actually on the forms is different to the ones that everyone received. If you've got a photo of that, I know someone who's got that. He'll shoot it for you next week. Go, well, that's got to go in the book. So yep. there we go. There's another week. And it kept things like that. Kept someone going, have you seen there's another version of this? No, I've never seen that. And they're going, <laughs> I've got to get that in the book. It's like yep. an obsession. Like, I'm not physically collecting, but I am a collecting it for the book. So right. you know, I had to keep going. Well, that's got to go in. And so in the end, Joe's going, just finish the book. I'm going, someone just contacted me with this special mirror that I've never seen. That has to go in. He goes, all right, just one more. And then somebody yeah. else is back to me and he goes, all right, I'll allow one more. <laughs> yep. So, yep. Yeah, I was tweaking my, it right up till, till the final day. Yeah. Now, I was going to say, my but, anxiety right now is going through the roof. Like my OCD listening to you say that I, I, I would just constantly be like, what the fuck? Here comes something else. God damn it. Yeah, it know, would just kill like, me. It would kill look, me. I, I, I am sure that in between now and the next five years, there'll be other people will reveal this other thing that they've been having for ages. You never revealed it at the time. So yeah. you never know there, there might be a revised second edition. And then Kiss did say to me, should it have a second printing, we may do something else special with you for that, you know, that additional content or something that we're talking about. So you never know. If, if I have missed something, there's already one little mistake in there. And as I, this is I joke to people. I say, um, I say, if you see, if you've ever got a Turkish rug, there's one mistake in every Turkish rug. <laughs> and they deliberately put a mistake in there. And the reason is because they say only Allah is perfect. The rug can't be perfect. So I'm using that same theory for my book. The book can't be perfect. There's got to be one mistake in there. And, and, then, and then I'll jokingly say to the kids, then, haven't you read your Quran? No. <laughs> <laughs> no let's start, let's start, let's start that, that off. That yeah, exactly. I'll just joking with people, of course. You know. nice. uh, so, yeah, so, so, so there may be some mistakes in there. Um, of course. And, and no one, nothing, nobody, the point is nobody's perfect. So yeah. feel free to write to me and tell me what's missing. And we'll put it in the second edition. If you see any errors, if I spelt my own name wrong, you know, anything like that. If I spelt Gene's name wrong, he'll let me know as well. You know, if I've, if I've done anything wrong, write to me, tell me, and, and your name will appear at the back of the second edition for helping me out and making the second edition even better. But the first edition is pretty good. You have to get up pretty early to find the safe. Nice. nice. Now, how's now how's the – so far, so, you know, the pre-orders are – you know the shipping's going to be going yep. – going to be coming soon. How is the – how is the, the – the, the, like, how is your – your expectations based on what's happening now in terms of the pre-orders, how do you feel about the feedback that you're getting and the pre-orders that you see in terms of getting ready to ship this? Is is it beyond what you thought? Are you happy with what you're seeing? Because the feedback that we're seeing on social media, the excitement, I mean, people are just losing yeah. their minds over this book. Yeah, it's a, like it's, it's just been incredible. I, I, I always knew there was a small market for it, but I think, you know, Maybe it's paid off my enthusiasm for that kind of nostalgia and that I'm, I'm hoping I'm coming across as that about how much uh, I'm just basically a grown man child. I mean, I, st I still still see Masters of the Universe figures and go, ooh, and remember back to, you know, oh, those yeah. days, you know, like that kind of excitement that makes me feel like a kid again. And that's yep. what I wanted to portray. So I think it's starting to reach just slightly out of the hardcore collector's, you know, circle. Yeah. And, and I think that's why it's done so well is because... This, this is about your child and about your memories as much as it is about toys and and, 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 and it's and it's a, it's a completely unique book i mean there's a ton of books out there and they're all terrific you know with, with uh mm. you know i think I, I i just recently got the um what's her name is it lynn um I think goldsmith i always yes, say Christopher, thank you. but that's yeah, yeah, Link no, Gold. no, yeah. no. Thank you. Yeah, her yeah. book, her, her. I mean, that book is amazing. It's a, it's an amazing yeah, book right. if people don't have it. Um, but it's it's photos of the band, which we all love. But what you're putting out mm -hmm. is something that no one's ever seen before. Is a is a is a photo of okay. all those things that we grew up with. Exactly. You know, I just I I just wanted I wanted to do something different. And yeah, again, it's never been done before. So again, why didn't why don't I just do it? You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I love that entrepreneur spirit. Small business, I love it. I love it. You know what? F yep. that. Yep. I'll do it myself and I'll do it better. Good yep. for you. Exactly. And, yeah. I, and I say that to all the people out there at home. If you've got a great idea for a Kiss book, 
go out and do it. You know, you never know what will come of it. I say you start tomorrow. There's nothing stopping you at all. Work out, work out what you're going to sell it for. Work out how much, what type of printing cost you can get. Work out how much profit you'll get. It's pretty easy. It should take you know less than a week to work out whether you can make money out of it, and then yep. promote the hell out of it like I did. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Especially um, why, don't, why don't we do it? All thing we're lacking is um talent and ideas um, and money. <laughs> ideas, <laughs> time and money. Yeah. 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 Other, other than that, other than that, we're all set. Let's go to the shop and get those, surely. Yeah. So, so Nicholas, I just got. I have a couple more questions. So, of, yeah. all, of all the 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 tons of items that are in the book, how did you decide yeah. on the cover? And did you put a lot of thought into the cover? Because that's the first thing people are going to see. Because I love the cover. Those Mego yeah, dolls. Yeah. Those Mego dolls are amazing. So, wh- wh- how did you how did you pick the cover? And did you spend a lot of time wondering what you're going to put on the cover? Well, the initial dummy cover was the typography, as you see, the hottest brand in the land that was on a black black background. That was the original thing. And also, I think that was originally the idea initially to get around not having to use any trademark things. So maybe originally the actual, before we had the KISS logo, the S in hottest was the was the, start, was the um, lightning bolt kind of thing. Yeah. So we could kind of suggest it, you know, with the typography. In fact, the typography that I've used is the same as the love gun. I think it's a typeface called Dynamo. But okay. yeah, so 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 I, I had that, and then when Joe came on board, when I was totally burnt out and couldn't do it anymore, um, jo- Joe sort of had the idea: what about the Mego doll, like really big? So he his original mock up was a great one. He said, "How about just black and white?" He had the Jean doll face, really huge, and I thought to myself, "Oh, that's cool." So I'll get it, buy it, get a macro camp camera with a really close lens. I used to shoot food photography, and I thought I might as well shoot the other doll while I'm there. Gene, uh, Ace Peter, maybe for the inside or for some other promotional thing. But it was only ever meant to be Gene's face on the cover. We had trouble making the typography work. And then I just sort of laid the four of them out, like the Dynasty cover, and stuck the logo in the middle. And it was, it was almost like I showed Joe and I went, oh, like something like that. He goes, exactly like that. That's it. You've nailed it. I went, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, We've done it. You know, I, I mean, it, the it was co- as easy as that. You know? Yeah, I mean, the cover is honestly I, I just having that book on a table you don't even have to open it up to realize how awesome it is just the cover yeah, right I, there just grabs you i think everyone gets it and and you know gene and paul haven't seen this thing yet now I, I fully expect you know for when they see it i think they'll suddenly go okay this guy is producing quality here you know it's not just a yep i think we've agreed to do I, I i think i think they'll be quite excited by it john john five was blown about away with him by it when he saw it and, and the couple of people who've seen it are just going oh, i wasn't expecting it to be that big or that thick or that kind of quality level so I, yeah, I really, really nice compliments to, to yeah I can't, I can't wait to get it i mean my 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 wife and my my 15 year old son they both i mean they they know that i'm a kiss freak i took my wife to one of the shows took my son to another one of the shows i've told them all about the book i told them that you were going to be on the show i've shown them pictures and they're even excited about looking at the book because like you said it expands past a kiss fan it's just looking at these just yeah. amazing pictures and these items so that my, my 78 year old mother was flicking through the copy that had landed back home in australia and she said i was actually looking at it for quite a while i was expecting her to just go oh that's very lovely darling you know that kind of thing yeah. but you yeah. know she was actually flicking through it you know looking at things and you know finding it interesting so i think it is a bit a bit like that so um yeah no it's I'm, I'm glad that you guys are excited. I'm glad that the response I've got from it and this re- this book really is for, for you guys. For the, I just I just want you to feel the same way that I feel towards this kind of stuff. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I was Zeus? just going to say no. Yep. The same thing. It's it's one of those things that you you that nostalgia pod that separates it from other kiss items. I won't just say books, but items. Uh, again, I'm not a collector, but I want this book and. You know, it's something that I think every Kiss fan or even somebody that's not even a big Kiss fan, maybe a 70s fan or, yep. um, you know, a collector of likes the collection or likes nostalgia things. They can find something in this book. They'd be like, oh, yeah, holy mm. shit. You know, and uh, I, I can't wait. I think the listeners can't wait. Uh, I, I'm extremely confident that this thing's going to blow up probably bigger than you can expect because mm. just just by being out there in our our little kiss social media everybody's mm. uh super pumped i think you've done an awesome job with this okay. uh, i commend you uh and uh honestly we can't wait to to get this thing in our hands and uh and boast some more about it awesome that's, that's amazing 
And, and, and again, it's hottestbrandbook.com. Yeah, that's correct. Hottestbrandbook.com. Awesome. 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 So, so um, that being said, uh, is there anything, is there anything, Nicholas, that you want to add that maybe we didn't cover? I know we kind of talked about everything from the inside and the outside and everything. Is there anything that you wanted to throw in that maybe we didn't, we didn't talk about it, about the book? Yeah. No, just I'm just I'm just super excited to meet Kiss at their rehearsal studios on Saturday and, and get them to sign the book. Like I just I'm looking, I'm, and it's not not even as a fanboy. It's, it's it's more even just to to see their reaction when they see it. So I'm I'm I'm, ex- I'm really sort of pumped for that. I'm going on um Jonesy's jukebox tomorrow on on um, LA radio. Um, I'm not sure what he'll think of it. Um, being an old <laughs> an old Sex Pistol, I think I think it'll be cool. Uh, although his opening question to um to Paul Stanley was. So he's still doing the makeup, which always made me laugh. Oh boy! All nice. Saying, yes, we're still doing the makeup. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Well, that's very yeah. fun. Yeah. The, cool. the fanboy in me would not be able to be controlled. I'm sorry. Good <laughs> exactly. for you that yeah. if you can handle that. But I, I know you yeah. got to put on that professional hat. Well, I want to I, I do future. We want to do future projects with them and other, and other rock groups. So um, yes, it's it's about it's about giving them a bit of respect. Making sure that the the signing goes very quickly and without any fuss, um, yep. and not staying there going, you know, like trying to be all fanboy and you, you have to go. What you eat for breakfast, get, get Paul? In, get in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, 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 to be serious, it's like get in, make sure it's just easy for them. The books are open for them. They walk along and sign them, and and then they will go away with that person was easy to work with because I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to spend too long even chatting with them. It, it was just it worked. And yep. we'll be happy to do a future project together. That's all I care about. Like I even said, I don't even care if I don't meet them. It's, it's, that's not the most the most right. important thing is is getting the product signed, so the people at home who paid the money for this will get their books. It's a it's purely it's delivering what the customers want. Like they always say, this is for the fans. Well, this this book is for the fans. It's not it's not for my personal. Career. I've interviewed Gene for FHM magazine. I've met Paul before. It's not about me meeting them. Yep. It's, it's, yep. Oh, that's Gene calling right now. Gene, get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, the last out. thing I was going to say was um, you mentioned something that I'm going to ask you about, and that is you oh. said something about future projects. Do you have yeah. future projects with KISS, uh, having connected with them now, that you might be able to tell us about? Or even if not, are there any coming down the pipeline? There are at least two books we've got in the pipeline which we're pitching to Kiss, and there's oh, uh, one book we're pitching to Queen at the moment. So um, wow. we've got a few things going. Like, yeah. Nice. So, uh, I, I, un- unfortunately, because we're in negotiations for everything, I can't say a single word. Yeah, what yeah. Mean? Okay. Yeah. But, but, uh, but trust me, you will, you will love these because these, these two ideas, again, never been done. Excellent. Nice. Well, awesome. if, if it's anything like this, then uh, obviously we're all going to love it. Yeah. Um, Tom, we usually go after this into uh, questions. Yeah. Do you have any so, kiss questions? I hope you are ready and you got your kiss hat on and uh, you can help us out here, Nichols. Yeah, we got we yeah. got a, a couple questions. One of them is um, is is kind of interesting that Nicholas is here because it's 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 kind of collector related. Um, so this is uh, from Twitter. This is from Javier Boster, and he asks. If you could own one piece of jewelry that the band has worn on stage, for example, Peter Chris's cross necklace or, you know, anything that any of the band members may have worn from any era during uh, their stage career, what do you think it would be? Nicholas, you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a uh, collector. What do you think would be a cool thing to have that like a stage worn item by, a, by yeah, one of the yeah. members? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm one of those people who only really collect the merchandise. I don't really collect the, the costumes or the stage-worn stuff. But I, I, you know what? I always like it. In the Shandy video, I think it is, when they're getting changed and Gene has that kind of spider thing that goes on his wrist. I always like that. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's like a kind of a – it's not really stage-worn. I suppose it's technically they've come off stage or staged for the video. But, yeah, I, I always like that thing. But um, I did – I'll tell you what I did see at John Five's house. He's, he's got the – Ace's original belt from the Daisy, like there's the the one that his mum made, and and as he points out to me, he said, when you do it up, look how thin his waist was. There is not a human man that could. Do you remember how thin that guy? There's not a human man that, that would have a waist that thin. But if you remember the photos of Ace back in the day, 
he was, oh, there was a nothing to him. It was just it was, it was it was freakish. But when you see this thing, you go, "How did that fit around a human being?" Like, yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that I thought that's a very cool one, you know. But John has nice. it. I love looking at it. Zeus, what what about you? Anything you can think of? Yeah, I, I, nothing to do with Shandy. Not for me, really. <laughs> That fucking song. That's just a pet peeve of mine. That's a whole different subject matter. Um, yes. I would, I mean, I would say the obvious one, the Peter Chris cross. That, that, Peter, yeah. 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 I don't wear an earring or the earring that he has in the, um, that he always wore there. That oh. thing, yeah. Uh, the, the, little, the, the little, like, the little ivory kind of. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah. I think it's on the, the cover of a Sticks album, if I'm not mistaken, that little thing. <laughs> I remember. Oh, okay. um, that's in the video. That's in the uh, show no something video. He's got it going. Yeah, okay. yeah. that's cool. That's All right. Another. Do you have anything, Tom? Uh, I can't. Honestly, I can't think. When I think of like jewelry, like I mean, I can't. I I, I don't know. I, I I can't think of anything. I mean, pro- honestly, probably something. Maybe something that like Ace wore. Like I know Ace used to wear like rings and stuff, kind of like in the like in the Dynasty videos. Mm. Like I don't know, maybe something like that. I mean, I, Gene's my guy, but I can't think of anything that Gene wore that would be jewelry related. I think of the revenge stuff in Extreme Close Up. He had all those. Oh yeah, all those big, all those big. Sc- yeah, you can get you can buy those at Hot Topic for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Hot pockets? Would you, yeah. All right, so we, let's see. We got another one here from uh, another new listener. This is on Twitter again. This is Travis Baxter, and he says, "Oh, this would be a good question for our friend Sonny Pooney." He says, "Why the hell doesn't Asylum get more love?" He says, "I know that the cover with the hot pink and the neon and all that with the costumes." He said, "But the album kicks ass." Do you think that some fans? take Asylum out of its mid-80s context and let the look overshadow the music. Zeus, you go I'm, first with this. Actually, no, go go ahead, Nicholas. You go ahead. What I'm do you sorry, think of Asylum? I thought you were asking me. Yeah, no, um, Asylum, I, I actually, I, I really like the sound of Asylum. Like, animalized, meh, not so much. And and I never really liked Mark St. John's guitar solos. Um, I found, like, some, some of that pumping bass from Mr. Jean Bourgeois, um, yep. Yep. It was, it was really quite cool on that. Like, like, that dum, 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 like it almost bounces along. Yeah. In some, you can really tell it's not Gene because it's got this bounce to the groove under Art All Night and under a few few other ones. There's some, something really nice about some of the bass the bass tracks on on Asylum. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like it. Yes, I, I don't. If I ever put it on, which is not that often, I don't. My mind doesn't always go to the costumes. I just sort of cool. It's a nice rock rock tune, basically. You know. Yeah. 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 Zeus. What about Zeus. You guys? What about you with Asylum, Zeus? He wants to know why. Well, he's saying because why. He, he's he's wondering. He he he's assuming. Tom, that I'm setting this up for you. Oh, I'm okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would tell him this is why because it has King of the Mountain. It has I'm Alive. It has Love's a Deadly Weapon. It has Radar for Love. That's why that album doesn't get any love. I, I was Come pretty on, much give I, me I was, a break between all those classic Kiss albums. You want to bitch about Asylum not having too much love? Listen to half of those songs. And then the <laughs> ones that are good, eh, they're all right. Yeah. I agree with both of you. I agree with Nicholas that the album sounds great. It has a great sound. But then what Zeus just said, half half of the album is, is garbage. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it is. It is. It, 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 he's right. Yeah, the look is stupid. Paul on a fucking on a fucking jungle vine swinging through the air with, with his, his fucking, sailor's hat on, <laughs> yeah, with his fluorescent like purple gloves. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah, it's that that opening that opening where it's just the finger just going. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> come to me like you know that, that's the that, that that you cannot not laugh at every okay. single time. Exactly. Right. Uh, tell me why in tears are falling at some point. Uh, Bruce is in a shower. Like not like in a real shower. I get tears and they think of rain, but he's in a shower with this like yeah. looks like a shower from an airport. Yeah. <laughs> it's just stupid. And you know, and poor Bruce, poor Bruce, he's such an accomplished professional musician. Oh, yeah. He must he must look back at that video and be like, God, what the hell? I mean, it was a great time. Yeah. It was a great yeah, time. I might be, I might be but, misremembering it, but does does he kind of he kind of goes upright all of a sudden? 
Like he's kind of, is he lying back and he gets pushed forwards or is he <laughs> forwards and goes, I can't, in my mind, maybe I'm misremembering it, he's sort of like on his back in the shower and he goes, oh, upright. <laughs> and I, then I'm wondering that there's just three crew guys now in there with the shower with him lifting Bruce like up lifting on a plank. Kind of like, on a plank. But that ah, and he had that fro. Remember the fro? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 And it's like wet. He looked like a wet poodle. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's just, yeah. come on. You add all that together and then and that's yeah. Wilder. You know, yeah. they yeah, try to do the Dynasty, um, not Dynasty, oh. the solo albums look oh. where they each have their own color. I mean, mm. with the lipstick. I really like the back cover. I would have liked the back cover to be the front cover, that white thing where they're standing there and it's got the bars of color. Like if you, that's if, prob- that, I don't I remember think- it. So that could, that could be a cool. That would have been a good front cover, actually. I like. Yeah, the yeah the front cover is the front cover is bad, but you know. Yeah, yeah. It would have been interesting to get this question, Zeus, if we had uh, Sonny on, because I, I don't get it. We love Sonny. I, how the fuck is this his favorite Kiss album? I don't get it. You've got <laughs> you've got Dress to Kill, uh, you've got Rock and Roll Over, Love Gun, Destroyer. You've got Creatures of Night, and you want to sit there and be like, Oh no, Asylum! Are you yeah. Fucking out of your mind. Yeah. And we, it's a Kiss album. We love all Kiss, right? Of course, of course. It's kind of like it's kind of like going Star Wars. I, I love Attack of the Clones. That's my favorite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <Hell. laughs> yes. But I, but I always defend these things when I say it's Star Wars. I wouldn't care if it was a fucking a, a, a movie where fucking R two D two is taking a shit. It's still yeah, Star yeah. Wars. I'll still go out and yeah. see it. Like I don't what? care. But it's right. not fucking compared to that to Empire Strikes Back. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Well, the well, the 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 argument is bad kiss is still kiss. Yeah, yeah like pizza. Still, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Perfect. So, so those are our questions. All right. Yeah. So now, for us, we always want to leave something for you, Nicholas, to tell everybody where they can find you, where they can get the book again, where they can listen to you, all right, follow you for any other future projects. How people can find you. As always, you can find me on everythingkiss.com and on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. I've also got a Facebook page for the hottest brand in the land. That's there. And you can buy the book at hottestbrandbook.com. So that's there all the places you find me. You can also see my face um, slightly drunk on every episode. of Because I record at night. They record in the morning. So, um, yeah, I've already got a few wines under my belt. And I do kiss my collectibles there. So, it's yeah, party on. Uh, again, it's, it's, the, it's the ace fraley of the group. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And, and for the people out there that maybe aren't familiar with Kiss My Collectibles, it's a it's a great podcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I listen to it. I just listen to it audio. I mean, yeah. I know vi- visually some of the episodes are obviously a lot better, um, yeah. but it, it's 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 a great and it's a fun podcast. And you will yeah. fall down the rabbit hole of eBay once you start listening to these guys like I have. So good stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. And tell them how the people can swear and how they find us, though, Tom. Uh, so email us at shoutedoutloudcast at gmail.com. Uh, we are all on the social medias. You can find us, Shouted Out Loudcast, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, our podcast, we're on all the major platforms, uh, you know, Apple, iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Play, Podchaser, Podomatic, YouTube. Uh, the YouTube is just the audio um, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody wants to see our faces, but whoever who knows that might that <laughs> that might come that might come on down the road. That might come on down the road. Um, yeah, and if you can for people to find us, you know how we always say go and give us one of those five star child reviews on uh, all the podcasters out out there, so people can find our podcast and listen to us and share with other people. Um, on, a, on before we get into famous last words, I do want to say uh, we will have some uh, pretty big news for us coming down the pipeline pretty soon. Yep. We're going to tease it a little bit, and uh, you'll be seeing some stuff coming down and uh, on to bigger and better things. Uh, I'll leave it there. Um, so as I was saying, we usually ask people famous last words. Uh, Nicholas, any famous last words? Yeah, I was thinking about this. My famous last words is more throwing out a question to the Kiss Army based on Kiss lyrics. Now, the, my question is to them, what is love? Remember that song, what is love? Baby, yes. don't hurt me. Oh well, this God. is what, what, is, what is love, and is love like a muscle and you make me want to flex, or is love like a glove and it fits just right? <laughs> Excellent. So sometimes I feel that love is like a slap in the face. 
Oh, there's your Twitter poll, Tom. Uh, I love it. That is perfect. What is love? Per- you just gave us our Tuesday Twitter poll, Nicholas. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. Tom? Well, I'm just going to stick to my standard famous last words, and I'm just going to end with this. Searching in the darkness, running from the day, hiding from tomorrow, nothing left to say. Zeus, take us home. So... She walked in like a lady <laughs> with the glass of pink champagne. <laughs> I wouldn't look if you paid me because to me, she's still the same. Oh, wonderful. Nicholas, Wisely. thank you very much. Tom, thank you. thank you. Nicholas, thank you so much for taking some time. We know you're extremely thank busy you. and we really, really appreciate it. Good luck with the book. Thank um, you very much. Much, su- much success. You deserve it. You've put a lot of heart and soul into this, and we're excited to get it too. So thank you so much. Cool. All right. See you guys. Kiss fans, go out and get the book. All right. Till next week. Peace out, Girl Scout.